What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Wrestling with Jonas. This is episode 95, and today is a special interview with episode in conjunction, in, in collaboration and partnership with IWE UK, uh, a very good wrestling organisation uh, that's coming out of Essex, and I'll be uh, interviewing one of their up-and-coming young superstars very, very soon. Before all of that, just to throw out one singular plug, and that's uh, our new Wrestling with Jonas website, wrestlingwithjonas.com, where you can find links to all of our social media pages, so if you want to find out where to get in touch with us on facebook twitter instagram you've got the links at the top of the page our full archive of podcasts video casts vlogs interviews are all up there as well including uh, daily uh, news updates on the wonderful world of pro wrestling that we all love and of course articles from my team of writers and links links to uh, merchandise as well for wrestling with Jonas if you're interested in getting a wrestling with Jonas t-shirt that is of course uh, but as I said this is the, the second in our series of, series of interviews in partnership with uh, wrestling promotion out of Essex IWE UK to help shine a bit of a light on some of their many up and coming young wrestling talents and uh, my next interview in partnership with IWE UK UK, of course, is the very exciting Maverick Blade. So, Maverick, good evening. Thank you for coming on the Wrestling with Jonas podcast. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing. Uh, I'm pretty good. I'm excited to be here. First podcast, so I can tick that one off the list. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm very much ready to do this. Excellent. Now, we're very, very happy to have you on board and really happy to be working in partnership with the IWE UK. Um, what, what are my kind of favourite questions I like to ask any guest that comes on the podcast uh, and with any of my interviews is about um, my guests kind of love for professional wrestling and uh, their, their first kind of taste of professional wrestling, their first recollection of seeing professional wrestling, either in person or on the TV screens. Can you remember that far back to when you first kind of saw professional wrestling on tv or wherever it might have been and kind of what got you hooked about it essentially so tell us about your your fandom for pro wrestling then yeah i guess so i sort of um i found it quite late on i, I was probably about 11 years old when i first sort of uh, saw wrestling i always had heard about it through friends but i'd never watched it um and i remember just at my dad's house one day and i was just flicking through the channels and i saw it i, I can't remember what match it was but i just kept watching and watching and then when i went over there next week i would have it recorded and i just sort of kept watching it that way and got really really heavily into it um and i think it was that, that classic thing of just seeing it on tv um and and it made a massive impression on me i think it was just uh, the flamboyance how, how big the characters were um and also, also like the the athletic side you know these guys are doing some crazy things in there and I think it just resonated with me and it was something that I wanted to do from very early on after I found out about it. Yeah. And uh, can you remember some of your, your, your favourite wrestlers from back in your kind of early wrestling fandom? Who stood out to you uh, back in, I suppose it would have been the early or to mid 2000s? Uh, can you remember who were some of your favourite wrestlers back then? Yeah. So I started watching just after WrestleMania 24. Um, I think the... Uh, that was the first pay-per-view that my friend burnt onto a, a disc for me. And it was the, that was when I really started getting into it. Um, and the the guys back then that really would, I was drawn to, there was two of them. Uh, it was CM Punk and Jeff Hardy. Um, and, and those two guys, are, you know, Punk with the whole straight edge thing, that was something that was, was massively important to me. I, I was straight edge for about three years when I was younger. Yeah. Um, and, and Jeff Hardy was just... There was something about how he was just being himself and it came across as being quite natural because I think he is this this character and he's just letting it show and he's just having fun with it. Uh, and I think that was what drew, drew me into him. But both of those guys were, were very influential to me. Yeah, and uh, no uh, two better wrestlers than Jeff Hardy and CM Punk to kind of get you hooked into uh, professional wrestling, I suppose. But uh, how would you say that your, your love for wrestling as a fan has changed over the years, especially as you've kind of got a little bit older, got a little bit wiser, and now that you're involved in the business itself, how would you say that your, your love for professional wrestling as a fan has changed, as, as your tastes changed, as your kind of uh, your love for certain organisations changed as the years have moved on? Yeah, I think it's just, um, it's not necessarily been changed, but it's just my, my knowledge for it has just grown. And I've, I've never really found a promotion um, that after I've watched it, I wouldn't watch again. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, I don't watch many promotions consistently, but I will watch anything. Uh, all the different styles, it all interests me to see the different takes on how things are done. Um, obviously, how it's presented differently now with being involved with, with the running of IWE as well. Um 
the perspective changes because now I'm looking at not only what's happening in the ring with the two wrestlers, I'm looking at how it's being produced, how the show looks, you know, what measures they're taking to make sure that their production looks as good as it can be. I think you have the different perspectives on it um, just as a result of obviously being in that position yourself. Yeah. Uh, would you say you, you watch a, a lot more indie wrestling nowadays compared to the mainstream product? Um, how has your kind of wrestling choices changed? Uh, certainly uh, talking today, 2020, um, do you tend to stick with more of the indie stuff because that's what you're involved in? Or do you still uh, dip in and out of the mainstream stuff? Um, so I a lot of my friends come and watch uh, watch the shows with me. So we yep. watch a lot of WWE's content. Um, NXT is the favourite right now. Um uni students seem to be eating it up uh, they're really enjoying it um and i think it's just uh, the way they're presenting their content it's a lot more serious than what we're used to with wwe so that's one that sticks out um as for the indie stuff um i'm quite lucky that we get um we get people sending tapes into iwe with the links to youtube and stuff um so just as a result of that you get exposed to to all sorts of companies from all over the place uh and I think that's quite exciting because you never know when you click on a link what you're going to see. Um, it, it could be anything. I've seen some some guys who send and their, their stuff is comedy and it's it's really, really well done. And I think it's just exciting to be able to be in a position where that's sort of just being given to me and I'm not going out looking for it. it it's sort of there uh, in the inbox of the of the page as like a little library that I can dip into whenever I um, whenever I want to and revisit bits that I've enjoyed. Yeah, that, that's really cool. That's really cool. And um, tell me a little bit about uh, you wanting to become a professional wrestler. So can you kind of think back to what sparked that desire to want to become a professional wrestling, a wrestler at the very beginning? How, how, how did you kind of make that decision to say one day, you know, I'm, I'm going to be a professional wrestler? Is it a desire that you've always had or is it something that kind of happened all of a sudden kind of um, more recently? I, I'd say it was a it was a more of a build. So um, I was obviously watching it for a couple of years and then I went on a family holiday to Butlins and All Star Wrestling. Obviously, um, they, they run shows on the camps. Uh, they were doing a show there and we went to watch it and um, two of the guys on the show, uh, who at the time I had no idea who they were, um, but it was uh, ended up being Seamus and Wade Barrett. Right. Um, and obviously, I think I saw those guys on that show um, and I was like, oh, this is, this is pretty cool. And then when I saw those guys pop up in WWE, I think it clicked in my head that actually this is achievable because people that I saw a few years ago working at this small holiday camp are now over in the States and they've made it big. And I think that made the link in my head that it was something that can be done. And I think that was one of the reasons why that decision ended up being made because um, from the second I made it, I was, I was dead serious about it. I think I was about 16 years old when I decided that I, I wanted to be a wrestler and be involved in the business. Um, and I, I told everyone who would listen, the way I was going to do it uh, was I was going to save up all the money that I could and I was going to buy a ring and put it in my garden so that I could train whenever I wanted to. Um, and I, I, was, I was dead serious about it. No one believed me. And then obviously it ends up happening and um, people start to take it more seriously. But it was one of those things that after I'd made that decision in my head to do it, I knew I was going to have to go and do it. So, so uh, tell me a little bit about the, the whole process then. So how did you find out about the, the training school to start off with and then eventually taking that big step to turn up on day one, learning all the basics, taking your first bumps? Uh, it must have been quite a, a daunting start uh, to, to kind of getting into professional wrestling and learning the ropes, so to speak. Tell us a bit about that process and how it all started off. Um, it was an interesting one. Uh, the first wrestling ring I ever stepped foot in was my own one. Um, I, I was so serious about it in my head that when I was 17, I said the money I had enough. Um, so I, I, I go online, I find out uh, about where you can get these rings from. Um, I, I get in touch with them, order it, it gets delivered. Um, and, and the first bump I took was in the middle of my back garden in this ring. Um, so, you know, I, I knew that it was, uh, had an element of, of obviously it was going to hurt. Right. Um, and people were like, well, what if it hurts too much and you decide you don't want to do it? Uh, and then, then the sort of the stubborn side of me came out and was like, don't worry, I'm going to do it. Um, and it sucked. The first bump, it really sucked. Uh, it, it hurt a lot uh, because 
I didn't really understand the mechanics of how the ring worked at the time or the mechanics of how to bump whatsoever. Um, <laughs> and it, it sucked. It was bad. Um, and I sort of, uh, everyone was sort of watching, see, you know, see what it was going to be like. And I sort of had to just sort of firm it and sit up and say that it was fine. Cause after you've just spent three grand on it, you don't want people thinking that you've wasted your money, exactly, um, and, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, and, and now when it's taken up half of your mother's back garden as well, um, you, you really don't want them thinking that you made a mistake, so you have to just stick it out. And, and then, and then, did you find a, a, a wrestling school? I mean, what was the next step in terms of your development? Um, I mean, yeah. obviously, you continued practicing uh, in your own ring. You were very, very fortunate to to have your own ring. But did you go somewhere and and kind of pay a school to develop you further? Yes. So um, I ended up going to uh, train to wrestle over uh, in Hounslow and the uh, way I found out about this place was um, a friend uh, worked with a, a girl who's, whose boyfriend was a wrestler and he uh, was just chatting to her one day and he happened to mention that I bought this ring and she was like no way my boyfriend would love that like let's meet up uh, you can introduce us uh, and I met them and um, he he was very good to me uh, we, we sort of got in the ring and just did a little bit and um he just wanted to see, like, at what point I was at, I think, um, having, like, not actually been to a school. Um, and obviously, he's the one who introduced me to, to train to wrestle in the end. And I went over there uh, and spent a little bit of time with those guys, um, Terry and Liam there. They were fantastic. Um, and they were, they were good because they didn't just teach you the in-ring stuff. They were teaching you how to uh, handle yourself uh, as a businessman as well. Yeah. The, you know, that knowledge is really important. Uh in an industry where we're all independent contractors, you need to be able to to fight your corner sometimes and and know when you're being taken advantage of. Um, and that was that was really valuable to me. Um, and those guys, like I said, they were absolutely fantastic. Uh, and then they went on uh, to be involved with Al Snow's Wrestling Academy, um, and they're doing very well. Uh, I, I, they were absolutely fantastic. Yeah, and that, that's a really fascinating kind of start into, into training and your first start. So you started training in your own backyard at the age of 16 then. And uh, how long before you made kind of your, your debut in a, in a proper match then? Can you remember what your what your debut match was like, who it was against, who it was for? So can you remember yeah. kind of, uh, was you training for long before you made your first uh, pro wrestling debut? So I'd, I'd, I'd owned a ring for probably about six months or so. Yeah, and um, I think I'd been in, involved with T2W for probably two months, I would say. Mm. Um, and I that they would they were asking the students if they knew of any venues that they thought would make good sites for one of their shows, and they were going to do a big charity show, uh, and they wanted a nice venue um, with a decent capacity that they could do it. In. And I just happened to mention that the the uh the events room at my high school was was the perfect spot for it uh it's the right size and uh you know uh, because i was at the school we managed to work out a nice deal where because it was for charity they gave us a reduced rate and it worked out really well um and i think it um it was sort of as we were doing the show at the school that i was still a student at they almost felt compelled to put me on the show i think so they put me in this battle royal um and it was a lot of fun. Um, there was all sorts in it. Obviously, uh, Liam ended up being in the match uh, as well. So I felt more comfortable, obviously, knowing that one of the guys who trained me was there. Yeah. Um, and it was just a good experience. You know, friends and family there. Um, and it was quite a... Um, even though it was a, a, just a small spot in a battle royal, I got chucked out pretty early on. Um, I sort of had my, my moment there and it, it meant a lot to me because obviously it was in front of a lot of people who had uh, at certain points doubted if I was ever going to do it. Um, and, and now not only had I done what I said I was going to do, um, well, at least part of, part of what I said I was going to do, I've done it and I have brought it to a, a place that is familiar to you all and you're, you're all seeing it firsthand. And that felt really good because if I got like achieved something that I really just set my sights on. 
Yeah, and I think we're gonna we're gonna talk a, a little bit later on about a, a particular match that you had that may also have been in the same school, but I think we'll touch on that a bit later on. Uh, so when did, so you made your your wrestling debut quite early on into your training process. Mm. Then um, you said your first match was was the Battle Royal. Um, when when did you kind of start to realise that you're actually getting quite adapt to professional wrestling, that you're becoming quite good as a wrestler, and when did you find your confidence inside the ring? Well, it was. Um, it was sort of a thrust upon me because after the Battle Royal, there was uh, uh, a few guys that I'd met at that show who were on uh, and had come up from Portsmouth and they were uh, running a promotion or setting one up rather down uh, in the south coast uh, in near Portsmouth. And they uh, had approached me after the show and said, um, would I be interested in working the show? Uh, which really surprised me because I, I wasn't expecting to, to get uh, any sort of uh, contact from this show because... Um, so I'll tell you what, some of the kicks I threw in that first match were were trash. Uh, I watched it back. It, it makes me cringe every time I see it. So I wasn't expecting any interest from anyone. But obviously, when there is, you don't turn it down. So I gave them the contact info. Um, they gave me a call uh, and said that they'd like to work with me. And it was for their first show. And obviously, that's fantastic. I assumed I was going to be in some sort of squash match against one of the guys they wanted to establish. Um, and then they sort of sprung it on me that actually... Um, they'd work that they that they were um, borrowing the T2W champion for the show as an attraction to main event the first show, um, and uh, part of that agreement was that he had to face someone from the academy as sort of a, an insurance that the title would remain with with their own guys, right? Yeah. And the only yeah. other guy from the academy on the show was me. So all of a sudden, I was in this position in my second match in of having to sort of have my first one-on-one -on -one match ever in front of a crowd, not only be on this company's first show, but also be in their main event for a championship. And it was terrifying um, because I really I wasn't ready for it. Um, and um, that actually turned out to be a blessing because it forced me out of my comfort zone and it forced me to, to really just work my ass off to try and just get through the match. You know, the, the focus for me was obviously I want to have a good match, but let's just make sure that I'm getting through it as well, because there were, you know, I, I wasn't in a position, I thought, where I was I could do that. Um, but actually working with the guy I faced, Theodore Powers, um, I I was very lucky because he was very good to me in, in, in guiding the match. He was he was calling the spots. Uh, we worked a lot of it out beforehand um, and it, it went OK. Uh, it, it went OK. And I ended up doing some more work with that company. Um, and yeah, it, it was a nice little rundown there. But it was a, it was being thrown in at the deep end, I guess. I was going to say it does sound like you're thrown at the deep end, but it sounds like you had a, a really fun experience. And it did kind of always force you to come out of your comfort zone and, and potentially develop uh, a quicker, really. So, um, uh, I mean, you've been wrestling now for, I mean, by my calculations, what, five maybe six years yeah, about um, right. so so uh you you're still very young still only what 22 at the moment then yeah. uh, maverick um tell us a little bit about your your kind of your your gimmick then your character because when you started i'm guessing that, that you didn't really have much of a gimmick or a character but how would you say that uh, your gimmick was how has it progressed and how has it developed through the years to the point where we've now got Maverick Blade uh, in the year 2019-2020. Uh, so, so kind of how have you made that progression with, with character and with, with your gimmick uh, through to what we've got today then? Uh, it's an interesting one because obviously when I, I had my first couple of matches, um, especially for the Battle Royal, it was on sort of short notice. It was sort of, we didn't know if we're going to be in or not. Um, so I hadn't really got a gimmick as such. I was just sort of thrown out there and the Battle Royal obviously... I was supposed to be a heel, but everyone in the crowd knew me as 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 Brooke. So it was uh, yeah. it was a tricky one because it, it, you know I couldn't be heel in front of my friends and family. I tried, but they're not going to boo me. You know, um, <laughs> it, unfortunately, it was a task that I couldn't achieve. But I think it was more when I I did that first match with KWE um, in in that main event for for that title with Theo. Mm. Um, I, I was forced to be a very vocal heel because the in-ring uh, uh, skills weren't really there. And I knew that going in. So in my head, what I was thinking is it's okay because no matter what happens, you can always scream at the crowd 
and make them think that you're a twat. It's you know, yeah. and and for some reason, my friends will tell you I I'm a very sarcastic, um, mean spirited person sometimes who just likes to you know if I think something's funny I don't really register that it might upset some people and I just sort of say it. Um, and I, I realised if I sort of just let that through and focus it in on on especially the, the, the kids in the crowd, you can get a really strong reaction because. The kids don't. The kids don't understand they're being worked, right? And it, it's a lot of fun when you get them hooked on it, uh, and then they become invested in whatever happens in the match because they hate you so much. You know, I think like it, when you look at it from that standpoint as a heel, your job is to is to make everyone in that room want to see you get your ass kicked. Yeah. And I think how you do that can change on a night to night basis. And I think the character sort of developed into just basically being a massive dickhead and. Yeah. I think that's when, when promotions ask me what's the gimmick that's sort of how I describe it to them because you know obviously he's got the name he's got this, this look with the these ridiculous long baggy shorts that they, they that they that is worn and people are confused by it at first but I designed the the gear um to, to not look like this the shorts were supposed to come and be normal length but when they came like that and I had to wear them for the first couple of matches. I got comfortable wearing them. I realised that because they looked so stupid, people were expecting me to come out and be goofy and to tell jokes and stuff. So when I switch it and start screaming at their children and making them cry, not only do they hate me because I've made their children cry, they hate me because it's not what they were expecting either. Uh, would you say that um, Maverick Blade, the character that we know uh, from, from now, is that in any way an extension of, of your your personality, or in any way an extension of of you know who you can be? Sometimes, tell us a little bit more, give us a bit more of an insight into into the gimmick and whether there's anything of the real you know brooking behind it. Yeah, no, I, I definitely think that's the the case because uh, it's like I was saying earlier with uh, with just me being quite sarcastic by nature um you know i sort of just tap into that and i think mm. i like to view the the character of maverick blade not necessarily as a separate entity uh, but just as part of me that i use because it's it, you know the the means that this character uses are effective in the industry he's in you know yeah. what what that character does is effective and it that is part of me and it's part of me that i i channel to use for that purpose you know i, I think that you can have many different sides to yourself and, and you have to in certain sense. Obviously being a student as well, um, my, my 100% of my focus is not on wrestling at the moment. There's a few bits going on. So it's interesting to blur those lines um, and actually like the, the real life elements of of the character. I want to start bringing in to, to the sort of wrestling world as well. Because I think that blurring the lines is important in this day and age because everyone seems to be having a go at doing it right now. You know, uh, I, I feel like kayfabe died a long time ago yeah. and that's okay. Um, it's not the world we live in anymore. And I think people are starting to appreciate wrestling as being um, exactly what it is. It's entertainment. Yeah. It's a very athletic form of entertainment uh, that there's no, there's no debate to be had, but they're appreciating it more for the idea of two guys going out there and, and piecing together a match sort of moment by moment to engage the audience that are there and the audience that are at home uh, and and people are sort of now understanding that there's a lot more that goes into being a wrestler than learning the moves and getting in the ring there's a lot of psychology that goes on behind it and how you plan the matches out and i think that's certainly one of the things that i've come to appreciate more in matches uh, just through being involved in the business myself but um a lot of people i know who are just sort of fans they also appreciate that aspect of it because they understand that it's not just you know two guys going out there and, and throwing a few punches at each other. It's two yeah. guys going out there and taking their lives in each other's hands and trying their best to put on the match of the night because that should be everyone's goal on that card. Yeah, I totally agree. So, so continuing along this theme then, um, I know that we spoke a little bit off air about uh, your very confident and very strong uh, mic work and confidence uh, in promo, uh, promo work. Where did this 
because I've seen a couple of videos of yours, mostly on Facebook, where you yes. do kind of challenge your opponents and you're throwing out a promo there, getting ready for your next match. And it's a very, very, you're very confident on the microphone and in front of the camera. Where did this come from? I'm guessing that it wasn't always that way. But w- w- how did you develop this style of yours and this confidence in front of a microphone and a camera? Um, I guess it started when I was um, still at school um, and doing my GCSEs. I, I elected to do the, the drama GCSE purely as a means of improving uh, my acting ability for the purposes of furthering my wrestling career, which I knew that I was going to have. Even though it wasn't there yet, I knew I was going to have it. So I was going to do everything I could while I was there to tailor my education uh, to help me in wrestling. Um, yeah. And I think my, my drama teacher was fantastic. Um, I, I was still actually in touch with him to this day. Um, he he was very encouraging and he understood that it was something that I really wanted. So he allowed me to tailor the projects we would do to a, to almost a, a wrestling centric theme of learning the skills that were involved. Um, you know, there was a time where he allowed me to be thrown off of a stage onto a crash mat during one of the, the school's performances um, because I just kept pushing and pushing and pushing for it. Um, and he, he just, he really allowed me to just develop the, the skills that I needed. Um, and obviously when you're given that freedom at a young age, it becomes, it becomes natural. It's easier to, to do these things when you're younger because there's so much less pressure to perform because it doesn't really matter. You know, at the end of the day, it's, it's a school performance. It's not a big deal, but I think it allowed me to just get comfortable feeling relaxed performing in front of people. And I think that even though in the promos I come across as being anything but relaxed, I come across as being angry about what's going on. Mm. The, the sort of behind that character, I am very relaxed in my head. I'm calmly thinking about what I'm going to say next to make the promo link to where I want it to go and make sure that it's a concise and, and well-worded promo because I don't script the promos. Um, they, I, I, I often don't plan when I'm going to film them. Uh, so I, I don't know if they, you've noticed through the videos, they're all over the place. There was one that took place um, at a house party that I was at, for instance. Um, and uh, truth be told, I had a few drinks that night. Um, and it, you know, the, you, the promo was good, but I think it was, it's because you have that that energy. And yes. it, it was more natural because everyone was at the party. Um, and obviously I'm talking about wrestling and stuff and they're all interested. Um, and someone was like, oh, well, can you show us? And obviously I'm not going to start chokeslamming people through tables and stuff. So the next best thing was a promo. And I said, well, I've got this match coming up. I guess I need to film this this video for it. Um, if you want, I, I can do it now. If one of you don't mind just, just holding the, the, the phone and filming it. And they were like, oh, yeah, sure, this is great. Uh, and all of a sudden I was put on the spot. And um, it was actually leading up to the, the match where I lost the Elite Counties Championship. Uh, which was a, a multi-man match. So I'm there trying to write the guys' names down so that I remember them when I'm talking about them. Because in my head, the only thing I knew about the promo was that I wanted to make the point that I was unhappy that it was uh, a multi-man match and that I wanted to give each guy who was in the match, in the promo, a specific reason why he shouldn't be there and why he didn't deserve it. Um, so the, the, the promo for me essentially was sitting in the middle of this party with someone holding a phone Um and looking at the names on the list and just going through them off the top of my head, just tearing into them as much as I could, um, not just on a, a level of what's happening storyline, but trying to blur those lines as well. Um, and it's just fun for me. It, it, you know, I, I don't like to, to plan them too much because then they don't feel natural. You know, the, the, the promos that you cut, they're never going to be perfect, but I often find that the more natural they are, the, the better they come off. And that's what I always try and achieve with them. Yeah, and I, I mean, the promos that I've seen, certainly the one that you just described at the house party came across very natural. And it certainly got across your, your heel personality as well. What was the reaction from the from the other people at the, at the house party after you cut that really awesome promo? Um, they, they were kind of confused at first because I, I obviously, you know, knowing me for me, not not just this wrestler, they, they'd seen the complete other side of me because I'm a very relaxed guy. I, I, I have a very chill vibe. I don't like to stress too much. Um and I think that's that's why the character works is because it's the, the polar opposite of how I try and conduct myself normally. Yeah. Um, and I think that's why it's so much fun for me because, you know, you can't act that way in everyday life. But when you step <laughs> into the world of wrestling, you can pretty much do whatever you want. Um, and I think that's why I enjoy it so much. And that's why it works. But they were quite shocked. Uh, but sort of as soon as the, the camera had cut, um, 
I sort of just uh, looked around and asked everyone, you know, oh, what do you think of that? And uh, they were all quite coy. But obviously, then the music comes back on and everyone's having a party again. But I think they all enjoyed it. <laughs> Brilliant. No, it was good. So just uh, looking at a, a different side of you then. So look at your wrestling ability now and your wrestling style. So... I mean, I've seen a couple of your matches and you are uh, quite fluid in the ring. You can tell that you're relatively experienced. Uh, but how would you describe your wrestling style? I mean, you know, if, if you watch some of your matches, you are kind of springboarding yourself or slingshotting yourself over the top rope. You've got some groundwork there. You know, you've got a mixture of uh, mixture of wrestling styles. Um, but how would you describe your in-ring wrestling style then? Um, I think what you say is definitely a mixture. And I think that, I've been very fortunate that I've been able to develop my move set um, almost on a move for move basis. If I saw something that I liked on TV, all I had to do was go in the garden, call a couple of my buddies, get them to come over. And there's a ring there where I can teach myself this move. So whatever it was, whatever style it came from, I had the opportunity to, to try it out in the ring pretty much instantly. So, you know, with the slingshot stuff, I was like, ah, it'd be pretty cool if, if I could do that because it's not the kind of thing you'd expect from a, a character like mine and, um, and and the demeanor that he has. Um, so I just sort of taught it to myself. Um, and I, I think that's why it's such a strange mix because there isn't really one style I can say that it's based on. Um, and certainly the, the the style of wrestling that I'm going to be using going forward has changed um, over the last sort of year or so. I've tried to make a, a concerted effort to, to lose some weight. Um, you know, I know normally the goal of wrestling is to get bigger, but um, I was already pretty big and in the wrong sort of way. So I've really tried to cut that down and I've actually managed to cut 21 kilograms to date. Um, which is obviously a considerable weight difference. So now my style has to move away from being the bigger guy in the match because mm -hmm. nine times out of 10 now, that's not going to be the case. Now I have to be smarter and I'm still a heel. So I don't want to do all of, uh, all of these really athletic moves, you know, a couple of sure. the slingshots here and there is one thing, but I don't want to be doing, you know, four fifties off the top and stuff. Um, and I think it's going to be a more tactile approach to a match, really viewing it as, you know, how do I win and how do I win this as quickly as I possibly can? And I think, having that mindset when planning the match will develop uh, a sort of another hybrid of the move set because I'll be forced to try new things based off the, of the fact that obviously that the character's appearance has changed. Yeah. Yeah. So we mentioned earlier about uh, your KWA elite counties championship. So you mentioned that, uh, you, well, I, I don't know if we have touched on it yet, but you were the elite counties championship in KWA. And, and I think you won the championship in 2019. Now you yes. were quite a link. You, you, you had quite a lengthy reign. Now you, you, you won the match against Preston Sage to win the championship. Now, if mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken, did that match take place in the same uh, school sports hall uh, where you had your debut all them years earlier uh yes it did uh and that um, i thought it myself yeah yeah it's, it's the same venue and uh that it was really cool for me actually because um the the show that that title was won on wasn't an official kwa show um right. i after i left the school um I, I had a friend who was still there in the year below uh, and unfortunately some years earlier his brother had passed away uh, due to an illness and his family had set up a charity in the name of that illness um, and the school run this week of charity events every year to fundraise for a local charity. Yeah. Um, and it's sort of um, planned by the students. And obviously my friend that year um, was part of the planning team and the charity selected was his family's one. Um, and I sort of was thinking about, well, how can I get involved with this? Obviously I'm not at the school anymore, but I'd, I'd love to help out in some way. Um, and uh, I ended up approaching him and saying, look, do you, do you think it's possible that, you know, I, I could bring the ring in and we could run a, a show on the lunch break, charge the kids a couple quid each to get in and we can do a live wrestling show to, to help fundraise for it. And we ended up working it out with the school and doing it. Um, and since then, it's become an annual tradition. And I've gone back and done it for the last, I think, three years now. Um, and uh, the progression of, of what we've done on each show, every time the production's been improved. Um, last year, I had another match for the Elite Counties title, which I was unsuccessful in against Logan Bain. Um, so it was very nice to come full circle for me and win that title, obviously, in that building where I'd lost a year earlier yeah. and obviously had my debut. It's, it's not often you get to 
um, to do that in the same place, especially not the place where you went to school as well. It's quite a unique um, uh, th- opportunity, I guess, that I, I was afforded. I'm quite lucky in that sense. Yeah. And what did it mean to you to be the elite counties champion for uh, KWA? So, as I mentioned, you were a fairly lengthy champion uh, with, with that particular organisation, with that wrestling group. Uh, you must have been very, very proud. I think this was your first championship, Maverick. So yes, tell us yeah. what, what it meant to you and, and kind of what that whole reign meant to you. But you said earlier that you, you lost it in a, in a six man match. But uh, tell us about everything uh, that, that, that was involved within your title reign um, last year. Um, yeah, so obviously winning it uh, on that day was very special because um, obviously it allowed for uh, friends, family to, to see it. Um, and it was just a, a pretty feel good moment for me because um, yeah. uh, it was one of the rare opportunities where obviously try as I might to be a heel in that building, I'm always a face. Uh, sure. um, and I think, you know, the, the that's okay. Um, you know, it's okay to, to get cheered in your hometown. It makes sense. There's no point trying to hide and, and shy away from that fact. Of course. Um, but it was just a lot of fun. And that's, that's to me, what's important about it is that it was fun. Um, everything about that show was just a good feel. And then the, the title reign that followed was, again, just, just fun. The guys that I got to work with, I, I loved every match I had for that title. Um I tried to, as much as I could, promote that title. Uh, I, there are points where I was walking around campus, uh, my university, with that belt um, and just just showing it off. You know, I went live on the uni's radio station with the championship sat right next to me, um, and I just did everything that I could to make the title as important as it could be because, you know, it's 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 not the main title in KWA, but I wanted it to be seen as that. For as long as possible and definitely while I was holding it and that was the, always the aim um, and it, that was a challenge for me and I really enjoyed that challenge and all the guys who were sort of working around that division for the time that I was champion um, had the same aim and I think it was that team effort that really made it uh, made it work so well because we all had the same goal of just elevating that division within the company yeah yeah. Now, we, we can't have you on the Wrestling With Johnners podcast without mentioning IWE UK, of course. They're our partners and sponsors of the podcast. Uh, but you've had some pretty memorable matches and, and some pretty memorable rivalries since joining IWE UK. Tell us about how you became involved with IWE UK and your time with the group so far then, Maverick. Yeah, so IWE, um, I... The, the, the first time this, this was a concept that uh, I heard about, um, obviously I've known Frankie uh, a long time um, and John, one of the other gentlemen involved with the company. Yeah. Um, I've known those guys forever. They're two of the guys who I met very early on in wrestling. Uh, and uh, the three of us sort of got together one day and decided, you know, like maybe we could have a go at running our own thing. You know, let's just look into it because, you know, we've got the ring, which is an expense that we don't have to worry about we've got enough people that we know who'd be willing to wrestle on the show. Um, let, let's give it a go and see if see if we can get it going. And that's sort of how IWE was born. Um, and the, the three of us really just sort of went into it with the name of, of trying to showcase uh, guys who weren't being used by other companies. Because um, there's a lot of talent in the UK who just aren't breaking through because there's just not space right now. Yeah. And we really try and put a focus on on those younger guys coming through and working with them. Um, and this is the idea between bringing in um, people like Rob Sharp uh, and having them work in a tournament going through to the final. You know, those decisions are made because it allows as many of the guys on our roster as possible to work with Rob and learn from him because he's a wealth of knowledge. And, you know, it, we try and give as much opportunity to people on that show as possible to, to learn and, and, and have that freedom to do what they need to do to establish their characters and find out what works for them. And that's sort of the driving force behind the company. Yeah. So just uh, side shifting slightly then uh, Maverick. So what sort of things do you like to get up to when you're not inside a wrestling ring? Obviously you're very busy at university. Do you have any, any hobbies or any interests? I know that we've spoken off air and you do have uh, the occasional appearance on a, on a FM radio show to do with the university campus, but uh, is that one of your, your interests or what other things do you like to go up to when you're not inside a wrestling ring? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, currently, obviously, university is taking up a massive portion of my time. Um, sure. But I am 
a thoroughly enjoying it. I'm very lucky to be studying the course that I'm studying. Geography is a subject that um, is is amazing. Uh, any of my friends listening are about to switch off because they've heard me talk about this so many times before. But I genuinely love my course, um, and I, I think it's it's such an interesting time to be studying it. It's so it's so current. You know, when we're looking at political issues, obviously there is a wealth of political turbulence right now, and it's kind of cool to be working with people who are sort of at the forefront of trying to unpick what exactly is going on uh, and getting to to talk to those guys and and just have that knowledge there. But um, yeah, I'm definitely having a good time at uni and just just trying to learn as much as I can, really. And uh, you're an occasional guest on the FM radio show. And uh, uh, tell us a bit about that. I know you've been on a few times. Tell yes. us about your involvement with Adam. Yeah, so um, one of my friends actually has his own show on the, on the station. And um, when he was first getting his show started up, uh, he, he was bringing on weekly guests. And I, I said to him, I was like, look, um, sort of I do, I do this wrestling thing like if you want I can come on the show and we can just have a discussion about it and just you know if you want to try out like an interview we can give that a go it'll help the both of us out it'll give me some experience uh and obviously then I can and sort of plug uh, the IWE stuff while I'm there as well it was sort of a, a happy mesh of, of helping each other out and obviously um I'm still good friends with but she have the host uh, and I'm, I'm going to be back on that show um many times in the future i hope because uh it's a lot of fun and i think that's that's again is the main focus like you have to enjoy what you're doing of course of course so going back to iwe then uh tell us about some of your favorite matches that you've been a part of uh since you you started working with uh, iwe so tell us about some of your, your memorable favorite matches that you've been a part of with that group i think that there um there are two really that spring to mind straight away um there's the match from the first IWE show uh, against against John uh, Johnny Royal, uh, where we went to the uh, the double count out finish, um, where we sort of came off the top rope, um, came down a real sort of uh, crash and burn situation, and neither one of us could get up to the count. That was fun because uh, it was a unique challenge of, of planning a match that wasn't going to uh, uh, a traditional finish. Um, and just having the ability to try something different. It was a lot of fun. Obviously, you know, working with, with, with John is great, but, you know, that's in a professional capacity. When we step into the ring, uh, you know, although we we might be friends outside of it, it's, it's strictly competition. And, and that's where that other side of me comes in, that vicious side. And I will do whatever I can to sort of, uh, to get the advantage and win. You know, whether we're friends outside the ring or not, it doesn't matter to me. And some people can't handle um that 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 balance uh of of me going in there and and you know not treating them like they're my friend you know that you you can be a respectable wrestler all you want but at the end of the day if you're not picking up the wins it doesn't matter and unfortunately i have a strategy in my head that allows me to pick up those wins and i'm going to continue to use it um and the friendships don't really matter and that that really came into play uh, with my second match that I want to pick out, uh, if there was two, I reckon this is this is the second against Jay Ramirez, um, in, and that match was was brutal. We 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 kicked the shit out of each other. Um, it was uh, just a fist fight, and it was it, it, it was an alpha sort of contest because yeah. I, I I'd wrestled him in the past and he he beaten me and. And it bothered me. It always bothered me. And I always sort of looked at it as, you know, with a, with a bit of taste in my mouth. And it was, it was an opportunity to just get in there and have a good old fashioned fight. Um, and do you know what? Did I did I walk away with the win that night? No, I didn't. But I still walked away with the Elite Counties Championship. You know, that is something that Jay Ramirez will never, ever be able to pry from my hands. Um, and... I'm quite proud of that. And that, that, that match was just, again, it was just uh, a, a brutal experience, but the crowd really enjoyed what we were doing. Uh, and I think you always have good chemistry with people and, uh, you know, it pains me to admit it, but I have good chemistry with, with Jay in the ring, whether we agree on certain other things or not, doesn't really matter, but the chemistry is there. And I think that is, that's important in, in why those matches I feel were the two that stick out in my mind. 
Yeah. So you've mentioned a couple of wrestlers that you've had some really memorable matches with. Are there any wrestlers, whether it be with IWE or other organisations that you've wrestled in, any other wrestlers that you haven't had a chance to get into the ring with that you'd really like to? Um, of, of course, uh, every wrestler's got their their list of people that they want to get in the ring with. Um, obviously, the the dream matches sort of go way back to when I first started getting into wrestling. Obviously, you, you, Jeff Hardy, CM Punk uh, are definitely near the very top of that list. But obviously, uh, looking at, at, at the current scene as well, um, there, there's a lot, a lot of good talent on the indies. I know we had Ash Draven in IWE. Mm. And I thought his character was phenomenal. I, I thought he, he's he is a fantastically well-rounded individual in the ring. He'd, he'd be a fantastic guest for the show, actually. Um, it, he he is fantastic. I'd love to get in there with him because I think we put on a good match wrestling-wise. But I also think that the uh, the entertainment value is there because they're two very boisterous and loud personalities that would clash quite a lot. I think that would be very fun to sort of watch unfold. Cool, cool. And uh, just kind of getting ready to wrap up the interview here, but what what motivates you as a professional wrestler? So what motivates you to kind of want to go in there and put, and put in the best match? So what kind of gets the kind of the, the fire stoked uh, on match day? Uh, I think it's that um, I, I love entertaining people uh, and I love seeing people uh, with a smile on their face and if I can do something to put a smile on someone's face then I will and I, obviously I've realized that given the character that I have uh, in the professional wrestling world that might sound strange but what I do um, you know as my role I view it as it's my job to make people hate me so that the, so that the good guy has someone to to dispose of you know it's the, you know that you can have a hero but he always needs his villain and I really enjoy that part of it um, and I also enjoy it, obviously, because it's it's different. Um, and I think that's what motivates me is 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 getting that reaction from people um, and and feeling like people have been, you know, whatever stresses they've got going on in their life, even if it's just for a couple of minutes while they're watching someone uh, boot me around the ring or watch me boot someone around the ring, whichever way the match might be going. Um, even if they just for a couple of minutes uh, sort of forget about it and just uh, just enjoy themselves. I think that's what I, I get out of it because that's what it did for me. Um, and it was always my escape. Whenever I was stressed about something, I'd go and watch some wrestling. And that's that's sort of my view on it and what I try to do when I'm in the ring. Yeah. As we mentioned earlier, you've been in the wrestling game for five or six years now. What's the biggest bit of advice that you've been given that's really helped in your wrestling career so far? Um, I think just like with the characters, be yourself because it's it's the best way to come across as authentic. That's the yeah. one thing I would say as far as working out who you are in the ring goes. Um, but obviously also just to make sure that you're you that you, you're keeping up to date with your training, make sure that you're eating well, uh, and just trying to be the best person that you can be. And that doesn't always mean being six foot two and weighing 250 pounds of muscle. That's not what it is, but it's making sure that you are looking after yourself at the same time, because it's okay to be um, a different shape to the traditional wrestler. You know, in this day and age, I don't think anyone can argue that um, the the shape of your body would hold you back is, is a lot more based on what you actually do in the ring, which is the right way to go. Um, But there is that element of looking after yourself because you are still, um putting your body through a great deal of stress and i think that's the other thing is just to make sure that you are looking after yourself go to the doctor regularly get checked you know if you've if you've knocked your head make sure you're getting the concussions checked because that is a major issue right now um and if you get it diagnosed and you sit out for a few weeks you might not like it but long term that's going to do you a wealth of good and i think that is that that's probably the biggest biggest takeaway that i would want people to have is that they're looking after themselves yeah some good advice there so where can the the listeners of the wrestling with john's podcast uh uh see there's any cards that you could be a part of fairly soon maverick yes so obviously we've got um the iwe shows we've got february 22nd we've got gold diggers at the Rittle sports and social club that is uh sort of in the essex area um and 
that show is going to be uh, a tag tournament type deal. Uh, and I'm going to be uh, involved in that tournament. Um, I'm not going to be disclosing who my partner is just yet. I'm going to keep that very close to my chest because uh, I'm in it to win it. And, you know, 2020 is going to be my year. Uh, and then 20, May 9th, we've got another uh, IWE show at the same venue. Um, obviously, KWA, I'll be working with those when they come back for their 2020 season, which will be around April time. Um, and uh, I've actually got a, a show in December of this year uh, for a, a promotion that I've never worked for before. And they're uh, making a return show. Uh, and I'll be, I will be involved with that uh, at the end of the year. But that's all I can say on that one for now. So you've got a very busy 2020 up already and lots of uh, really cool things that's going to come your way, hopefully, I'm sure, um, especially with IWE, of course. But uh, before we let you go, Maverick, do you have any, any social media plugs or, or in any kind of any, any places on the Internet where we can get more about you or say hi to get in touch? I know that you're quite active on Facebook. Uh, you've got a, yes. a, a Maverick book page. Tell us, tell us a bit about that and where my listeners can get in touch with you. Yes, so currently the Facebook page is the, the the sort of primary point of contact if you would like to hear my ramblings and various uh, creative insults for whoever may be in my line of sight at the time. Uh, that is going to be um, at Maverick Blade Official on Facebook. Um, we'll get all those links and stuff put out to you, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. Obviously, follow the IWE pages. You'll get to know about all their shows that are coming up um, uh, and what, what my involvement will be. Uh, on top of that, there's one more brand that I would like to give a shout out to who I'm an ambassador for, uh, and that's Hope Spot Clothing. Um, those guys are doing some it. fantastic yeah, sure. work. Um, they're doing some fantastic work in, in, in working around the issues that we've got in the business. Uh, you know, they are stamping out homophobia. They are anti-bullying and the clothing is amazing. I've done some work with them uh, and IWE is obviously affiliated with them as well. Um, check out their website. That is homespotclothingco.bigcartel.com uh, and all of the um, the profits get split uh, between various charities for uh, for that brand. They're doing some wonderful work. That's two page to IWE's page and to uh, the merchandise page that you just mentioned will be up in the description of this uh, episode. So Maverick Blade, thank you very much for coming on the Wrestling with Jonas podcast. I really appreciate you uh, sparing us some time to interview on this very special episode and uh, thank you, sir. No, no problem. Thank you for having me on. It's, uh, it's been a lot of fun. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm.